Sushma, you have you know you have talked about the HR as a marketer, yeah. and uh, by default, you know people believe that HR is a very boring function. You know, where you yeah. do some basic stuff only. Yeah. How do you propound it, this concept, and what is that? You know, you want to tell to the HR world that you know how they can be good marketers. Sure. So, I think that you know, first of all, we need to understand uh, in terms of marketing. Uh, marketing has changed over the years, right? Uh, marketing used to be interruption marketing. It used to come in your way, and that's why mostly when you talk to HR people, they don't think very positively of marketing. And marketing's evolved now. To get our people's attention, we have to give them value. We have to make something really valuable and uh, stand out for them, right? So that's a distinction in terms of marketing and what is marketing. And a lot of marketing is around content marketing because you have so many channels now. Um, so in terms of HR being a mark, thinking like a marketer, I mean, you look at marketers, they really have a handle on human beings, human behavior, consumer behavior. And if we started thinking like that, if we started thinking really about our people, yeah, not just going by our assumptions, but for example, one of the tools that they use in marketing is around creating personas. Um, and a persona is an archetype or a model of beliefs and behaviors, uh, mindsets and, you know, heart sets really. And building these personas helps you have a deeper insight into the people that you're serving. So, for example, example, before in L&D, our leadership development, we used to have, you know, supervisors, managers, executive. Yeah. That was our customer segmentation. Yeah. Um, and then we went ahead and we said, well, you know, let's go a bit deeper and let's build these personas. And what we found was that we, within these categories, we had a enthusiastic Isa, who was our constant learner, yeah. you know, and he loved coming for anything we rolled out. And we also had our stalled Seema, mm. who was one of our, who was a leader who was basically stuck in her career. And we had an organization-led Oleg, who would come for something only when the organization deemed it. So building those personas really help give us a further insight into people. And as HR, we should really be looking for that. We should be looking for getting real customer insights, associate insights, employee insights. So that's one part of it. Um, how we can think like marketers is by running campaigns on using human psychology. So uh, for example, the social proof. Yeah, social proof is uh, a psychological concept where you know people like something if other people like it, yeah. right? And initially, what we used to do uh, at Imar Hospitality Group is we used to we used to, for example, make social proof. We used to say, "Oh, this is what our customers are saying about us." But that's really vanity marketing. Yeah, the best social proof is when Ajay says something about Sushma, yeah. not when Sushma says, Ajay said this about me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, when we're looking at really making our initiatives, we want to make our initiatives, our HR initiatives, irresistible. Because there's too much noise. Yeah. People will tune us out. You know, so whatever we're trying to do, employee engagement initiatives, learning initiatives, recruitment initiatives, how do we make these irresistible to people? And it's by understanding human behavior, human psychology, and by building that in to our uh, customer insights, building that into our campaigns, building that into our content. Uh, building an emotion. That's how we'll make HR exciting. It's very interesting, you know, so knowing the customer and then bringing some of the marketing concepts like this, you said. Yes. You know, I think not all the HR people think in the same direction. So do you think that we need to retrain the HR folks also, you know, so that they can understand their objective is not to do their own stuff. They should not be slaves of the HR systems. They should create something which is for the official you know, goal achievement. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. I think that we need it's a it's a mindset shift first, mindset, right? Yeah. Um, and the mindset shift is, I mean, we were having a conversation about this earlier. The mindset shift is to become more to learn from other disciplines. Yeah, whether it's marketing, whether it's entrepreneurship, yeah. uh, whether it, what are these disciplines offering us? And then the mindset shift is to move from being an order taker to a true partner. And yeah, I know we say this a lot, yeah? The way that happens is if we start understanding our employees, our associates, that's when we'll be true consultants to the organization because instead of the organization saying, well, this is our strategy and this is what you should do, we can then feed in and say, well, actually, you know what? We have insight into our people that's deep. And this is some of the things that's coming out of the insights here. Yeah? Um, and be able to truly consult. Yeah. So how, how does an HR person understand the customer? You're saying the first we should understand the customer. Sure. Yeah, employee is also a customer, but external customer is you know, for which the operational existence yeah. is. So do you suggest some ways in which the HR people can actually reach out to the external stakeholders sure. and understand you know what they are expecting from the organization? You know, whether your customer is your employee, whether your customer is an external partner, um, some of the some of the methodologies is similar in that you know stay away from solution interviewing, do problem interviewing. Yeah. So a lot of times when we want to know something. We'll go up and uh, whether it's an external partner even, we'll say, well, what do you think we should do? <laughs> you know, what is it that you think is missing? We'll ask these questions, right? Um, and really what we should be asking them around is not these narrow questions around the solution area that we're looking at, but a much broader, we should ask them, you know, what would be their greatest aspirations in this area? You know, if they had to, what, what keeps them up at night around this? It's a very broad, where does the problem lie? You know, so first figure out what, what the problem is. Um, so interview in a different way. Yeah. Yeah? Use empathy maps. That's one of the, and you can Google it and see it. It's one of the design thinking tools that you use. Um, observations, immersion. You know, uh, video camera observations are great. IDEO uses them a lot, mm. where it really follows a person in their day. Mm. And video cameras, things. And the type of insights that you will get from that are things that you wouldn't realize before, because it makes you go, oh, wow, I didn't know that they were doing that, and it took them that long. Mm. You know? um, a good way sometimes with external uh, customers might be give them a camera and give them a set of instructions of can you take these pictures for me mm. yeah a picture of something that frustrates you mm. a picture of something that delights you mm. uh, and get them to talk you through those pictures mm. uh, so you can see through their eyes literally yeah, correct yes yeah. very interesting you know in fact uh, when you're talking you know i'm actually thinking that Require HR for HR now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and being a learning and development head, you know, I think you have a double responsibility. One, you know, to take care of the employee in general, sure. but within the department, within the HR department also, you know, a lot of um, re repositioning and the re understanding, you know, is required. Wow. Yeah. I never really thought about it that way. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's amazing. I never really thought about it that way. But that's a very interesting thing you're doing. You know, I'm, I'm really feeling good about it. So in Emma, you know, uh, when you try implementing these things, you know, is the top management interested in, you know, experimenting about such stuff? I think that's really crucial, right? Um, I've been with Emar for four years. And you know, I don't know. I think that you have to establish credibility. And, and now, for example, my CEO, my COO, 
my group HR director, everyone's involved and they're all excited about some of the initiatives that we do, uh, the things that we bring to the table and I'm very lucky in that also. Uh, but really getting that buy-in from your key stakeholders, uh, first understanding your environment and who your key stakeholders, who are your influencers, who are your early adopters, you know, and that's also thinking like a marketer, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so who are these people that you need to influence? Because without influencing these people and getting them on board, then we'll never achieve our objectives, right? Yeah. That's good, you know, so you have a good supporting management. Definitely. In fact, we, um, uh, one of the, the big initiatives that we're rolling out right now is around um, leaders as growth facilitators. So I actually have my general managers, uh, my corporate directors, facilitating workshops, uh, doing TED Talks type of, you know, EMAR Talks, um, doing being mentors, so completely involved in, you know, we, we call it pay it forward, in paying it forward. We also want to educate our young leaders who are coming into the HR domain. What do you want to give them a message that, you know, how they should develop themselves as a good HR person from the marketing angle, you know, which you have brought into the system? I think that when you're learning and when you're in college, uh, then you're, you're, you're like a sponge, right? Or you should be like a sponge. Yeah. You're taking in a lot of things. And there's so much HR related that you're learning. But one thing I would say is don't cut yourselves off from people in other fields. Yes. Yeah. You know, from having friends and having conversations with people who are doing different things, different from you. Uh, because otherwise we become very straight jacketed. Right? Uh, so that's one thing I would definitely say is don't cut yourself off. The other thing I would say is I find a lot of times, you know, people in colleges and when they graduate, they're looking for a job. So it's very much about me, you know, oh, someone helped me with getting a job or someone, it's always, it's someone helped me with something. And the way someone, uh, a youngster can can make themselves stand out is by changing that even though you're actually not even though you're young it might be because you're young you have so much to offer you have a fresh pair of eyes and you have you know probably a way with technology that people like Ajay and me well I don't know about you you're good with technology <laughs> you have so much to offer so you know don't underestimate yourself you have a lot to offer and offer that provide value to people you know provide your the most valuable thing that you can provide is your time so you know like the people over here are volunteering um, to be part of this initiative this is the best thing that HR people can do this is how you market yourself yes yes yeah thank you very much you know, thank you, you. Love you.